Alhamdulillah Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulihi al-kareem Amma ba'd A'udhu billahi minas shaytani rajimi Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Wa innaka la'ala khuluqin azim Sadaqallah al-azim Respected listeners Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said The best gift any father the best gift any father can give to his child is good akhlaq, good manners, good conduct, good behavior, good morals. These all come under good character. Wealth, health comes and goes, but good character, subhanAllah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, ma min shay'in athqalu fi mizan al-mu'min yawm al-qiyamah min husn al that nothing in the scales weighs heavier on the day of judgment than your good character. A Bedouin, a man from a village, comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and he says, O Prophet of Allah, Imam Ghazali rahmatullahi relates this in his Ihya'ul Ulum. He says, O Prophet of Allah, I pray five times a day. I fast the entire month of Ramadan. I cannot give zakat because I'm poor. I cannot go to hajj because I can't afford to do hajj. Will I be with you in paradise, O Prophet of Allah? Prophet wasallam said, if you can do this few things with your three organs of your body, do not look at the forbidden things from your eyes. And do not look down upon the servants of Allah. And if you do two things from your heart, do not envy other people. And do not feel jealous about other people. Do not, do not have this hatred in your heart. Do not envy, do not have hatred in your heart. And do these two things with your tongue. Do not slander others. Do not accuse others falsely and do not lie. If you do these few things with your eyes, do not look down upon the servants of Allah, do not, look, do not look at the forbidden things. With your tongue, do not lie and do not slander, and in your heart, do not envy and do not have hatred. If you do these things, then I will hold your palm in your my hand, and you will be this close to me in paradise. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is teaching us akhlaq, with the fellow human beings and also with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The akhlaq, the rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to pray five times a day, respected listeners. These are the minimum rights of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When we fulfill this obligation of praying five times a day, then all the akhlaq come into the picture where our akhlaq are more heavier than any deed on the scales of day, on the scales on the day of judgment said prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam fuzail ibn ayaz rahmatullahi one of the great pious predecessors would say i would rather sit in a company of an irreligious person whose akhlaq are good than sit in a company of a religious person whose akhlaq are bad yahya ibn muaz rahmatullahi would say Good akhlaq can save a person from any action he does, even though he may be a man of not with much worship. But bad akhlaq cannot save a person from the actions he does, even though he may be a man of much worship. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not only talked about good akhlaq, he walked the good akhlaq. Habar ibn Aswad, when his beautiful daughter Zainab radiyallahu anha Zainab radiyallahu anha is the daughter of Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when in the beginning days of Islam when people were persecuting Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in Makkah al-Mukarramah abusing him throwing dirt at him throwing filth at him filth at him humiliating him all sorts of harassment and humiliation he comes home dust all over his clothes and on his hair and the Zainab radiallahu ta'ala a little girl, tears in his eyes, a Sahabi relates this, he says, I saw a young beautiful girl with tears in her eyes, wiping the noble and blessed face of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Oh my daughter, don't you worry. 
Do not worry for Allah will make this Allah will make this Islam enter every home. And today, respected listeners, we're seeing this. Origins born and raised in America. He accepted Shahada. What manners, respected listeners? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that if you do not follow my deen, I will replace you with someone better, who will, with some others who will be better than you, who will not be like you. And we are seeing this with our own eyes, respected listeners. Our young people come to the masjid. I have heard from young people saying, when we go to the masjid, it's like written sadness on the walls. Everybody looks sad. When we say, Assalamu Alaikum, they say, Wa Alaikum Salaam. A high school dropout in America, respected listeners, forgive me for saying this. A high school dropout in America can talk with more decent manners than the most educated people from the Indo-Pakistan region, from the, but that's where I'm coming from. The manners, the akhlaq, the people have over here. The professionalism they have. Whereas we have Quran, we have Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his ways, his akhlaq. A believer should be like a magnet. A magnet is a lifeless piece of iron, respected listeners. A lifeless piece of iron attracts other pieces of iron. We are full of life. We should be full of akhlaq. That's the thing which attracts a fellow human beings. Zayd ibn Salam is a famous Jewish scholar living in Medina al Munawwara. He says, I saw Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. I saw all the qualities of Prophet under him except two. That his gentleness overtakes his anger. And no matter how foolishly you act with him, the more tolerant he becomes. I did not see these two qualities in him except I saw all the qualities of prophethood. So one day I was walking outside of my house and I saw the Prophet coming from his house along with, me, with him was Ali radiallahu anhu. I was walking in the direction a group of Bedouins came and they said, Oh Prophet of Allah, the leader of the group said, Oh Prophet of Allah, our entire tribe has come into the fold of Islam. And we told them that Allah will shower blessings upon you except Islam. But for quite some time, there's a serious drought going on in our region. There are no crops, food, water. We, we, we are starving, Oh Prophet of Allah. Do something, help us. Before these people go back to their own faith, as before, Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam Ali radiyallahu ta'ala said, "O oh, Prophet of Allah, we don't have anything." Zaid ibn Sana says, "I approach Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and said, 'O oh, O oh, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, I have some gold with me. It comes about it, it comes to about almost half a kilogram of gold from our 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 weight measures. I have this gold with me. I can give it to you right now." If you give me the garden one of your companions has, a certain amount of dates from that particular garden, prophets at the end of the month, Prophet wasallam said, fair enough, I will give you this garden. I will give you the dates from this garden on a condition that you will not overtake his garden, the ownership of the garden if the payment does not come to you on time. Zayd ibn Sana says, that is fair, we have the deal. He gives the gold to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Imam Tirmizi Rahmatullah relates this in his Shamail. He, he gives the gold to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam takes the gold, gives it to the leader of the Bedouins, and he says, spend fairly among your people. The Bedouin and the group walks away happily. Not even a month has passed when his dates are due. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is sitting by the well, has just returned from Salatul Janaza. Along with him is Abu Bakr, Umar, and Uthman radiallahu anhuma. Zayd ibn Sana walks in, pulls the noble shirt of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam really hard. And he says, where are my dates? Remember, this is not the end of the month when his dates are due. He pulls the shirt really hard and he says, where are my dates? Umar radiallahu draws his sword out. He says, you enemy of Allah. If I wasn't afraid of the presence of the Prophet, I would have killed you right now. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Umar, this matter is between me and him. Yes, he should have talked to me in a nicer way, but there is no way you should have talked to him like this. Because you have behaved with him like this, I want you to go him the dates we owe. Along with that, 
give him 1500 pounds of extra days from our measure 1500 pounds of extra dates to him for your behavior towards him Umar he goes gives him the dates he was he was being owed and then gives him extra 1500 pounds of dates Zaid ibn Sana says do you know why are you giving me these extra dates he says because our prophet told me to give it to you then he says do you know who I am Umar says, I do not know who you are, but who are you anyway? He says, my name is Zayd ibn Sana, the Allama of the Jews, the scholar of the Jewish people. Umar ibn al-Khattab says, if you are such a person of such standing, why did you act with our Prophet in that ill manner like you did? Rasul Zayd ibn Sana says, I have seen all the qualities of prophethood in your Prophet, except two, that is gentleness, overtakes his anger and no matter how foolishly you act with him the more tolerant he becomes today i have seen both of these qualities in him you bear witness that there is one allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and rasulullah is the last and final messenger he puts his hand in the hands of umar ta'ala anhu and he says take me to the prophet i want to take bait in his hands and he goes to prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam takes his bait again in the hands of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam oh prophet of allah he says, today I give half of my wealth in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After that, he participates in every expedition with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And in the battle of Tabuk, the skirmishes that took place, he gets murdered in the battle of Tabuk. Zayd ibn Sana radiallahu anhu. These are the akhlaq Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa taught his respected listeners. Revenge was not in his mind. Forgiveness worked wonders among the people. It made ordinary people extraordinary people. People entered in the fold of Islam, not on the first 10 years of Makkah, not in the first 10 years of Medina to Munawwara, or the last or the first eight years of Medina to Munawwara. When Makkah was conquered, that time droves and tribes of people came into the fold of Islam because looking at the qualities and the character of Rasulullah sallallahu wa No reproach and blame on anyone. Abu Sufyan, Hinda, all the enemies, Habar ibn Aswad, the man who threw a spear at his pregnant daughter Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anhu. Because of the injury she passed away, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Imagine the most traumatic experience for any parent, respected listeners. The most painful for experience for any parent is to bury your own child with your own hands. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam took Zainab radiallahu and his body in his own hands. He put her in the grave. His face was full of grief and tears. When he put her in the grave, came out of the grave, People saw a smile on the face of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. People said, Oh Prophet of Allah, what is this? We have never seen a scene like this. You just buried your daughter, put your daughter in the grave. You came out, your face was sad. Now we see a smile on your face, O Prophet of Allah. Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I pray to Allah, O oh Allah, lift up the punishment of grave and severe questioning of my daughter Zainab from the grave. And Allah accepted my dua and I smiled at, at, for my acceptance. I was happy for my acceptance of dua. Respected listeners, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with iman and faith. Allah has blessed us with so many blessings and bounties. Life is very short, respected listeners. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said one of the signs of the day of judgment is Allah will shrink the time. Everyone will have same 24 hours, same seven days of the week, but there will be no barakah in time. Juma was just few days ago. Today we are sitting here in Juma. A next Juma comes, respected listeners. Another Juma come. We do not know how long it's gonna. It's flying like anything. In this short life, respected listeners, let us forgive each other. Let us overlook each other's faults. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضٌ غَلِيدٌ قَلْبِ لَمْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ فَاعْفُ عَنْهُمْ وَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَهُمْ وَالشَّاذِرْهُمْ فِي الْأَمْرِ فَإِذَا عَذَمْتَ فَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ 
inna Allah yuhibbu al-mutawakkilin. Rasulullah Allah is telling Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Prophet of Allah, it was our mercy. Because of our mercy, you were gentle and kind to them. If you were harsh and hard-hearted, if you were harsh and hard-hearted, hard-hearted, people like Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, Ali, radiallahu anhu, had walked away from you, O Prophet of Allah. Therefore, overlook their faults, forgive them, and consult with them in your affairs. Whoever puts his trust in Allah, Allah surely loves those people. May Allah make us among those respected listeners. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem. Amma ba'd. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وسارعوا إلى مغفرة من ربكم وجنة أرضها السماوات والأرض أعدة للمتقين الذين ينفقون في السراء والضراء والكاذبين الغيظ والعافين عن الناس والله يحب المحسنين وقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أكمل المؤمنين إيمانا أحسنهم خلقا وخياركم خياركم لنسائهم أو كما قال عليه الصلاة والسلام أقول خلي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم وست فيغفر الله إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمد نبيه ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا بين يدي الساعة ما يتي الله ورسوله فقد رشد وما يعصي الله ورسوله فإنه لا يضر إلا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا عوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلم متسليما اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات وبارك على محمد وزواجه وذريته وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم رحم امتي بامتي ابو بكر واشهدهم في امر الله عمر وزهم حيان عثمان وقضاهم علي وفاطمه صيد النساء اهل الجنه والحسن والحسين سيد شباب اهل الجنه الحمد لله اسد الله واسد رسوله اللهم في العباس وولده مغفره ظاهره وباطنه لا تغادر الذنب الله الله في اصحابي لا تتخذهم غرضا من بعد فمن احبهم فبحب احبهم ومن ابغضهم فببغض ابغضهم وخير الخلون ثم الذين يلونهم ثم الذين يلونهم ان الله يعمر بالعدل والاحسان وايتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني اذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون واقيموا الصلاه